Alexander Edward Duffy studied at the University of Pretoria where he obtained an MA degree in history of art with distinction in 1976 and a PhD in the history of art with distinction again in 1982. He lectured in the History of Art, Museum of Science and Art Education from 1977 until 2003 at the University of Pretoria. In 1988, he was promoted to Associate Professor in the Department of Art History and from 1988, Head of History of Art in the new department, Visual Arts and Art History. He has been <coughs> the Head Curator of the Heritage Collections of the University of Pretoria with the task of integrating the collections into the different academic programs of the University since 2004. From 2005 until 2008, he drafted new policies for the establishment of the University of Pretoria Art and Heritage Committee. From 1991 to 1995, he was a board member of the Natural Cultural History Museum, and from 1995 until 2004, council member of the South African Association of Art Historians and a council member of the National Heritage Council. At present, he is a council member of the Pretoria Arts Association, the Heritage Objects Forum of South Africa, sorry, uh, the Heritage Objects Forum of the South African Heritage Resource Agency, SARA. And funny enough, we talked about SARA last week at a previous uh, panel discussion that we had. So, SARA is actually the Heritage Association of South Africa. Uh, he is an advisor for a number of auction houses, both nationally and internationally. Is a member of numerous national and international associations and is generally considered an expert on Chinese ceramics, the work of the pioneer South African artists such as Anton van Gogh, Franz Wurder, and Jacob Hendrik Pierny, ancient trade with Southern Africa and antique motor vehicles, which is his hobby, which happens to be mine as well, so we've got a lot to talk about. He's a collector of antiques and veteran motor cars. He's the author of numerous scientific publications and a number of books on South African art and culture. His most recent publications are the books Anton van Gogh, the smaller works, and the art of Conrad Taste, so of the land. In June 2009, he was awarded the Stultz Prize for his contribution to history of art in South Africa by the South African Council Academia for Vietnam's Copy of Kunst. And on the 18th of November 2009, he received an honorary medal for the South African National Association for Visual Arts, SANAVA, for his contribution to art and history of art in South Africa. In May 2009, he was the guest speaker on ancient Greek trade with Southern Africa at the 12th International Congress on Greco Oriental and African Studies in Delphi in Greece. Thank you all, by the way, for the donation that you've given us tonight, which will be given to the Anton van Gogh Museum. And with the history of what I read on his CV, I welcome you all to the discussion to over to you, Professor Dunn. Thank you very much, Jack. <laughs> and thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for coming along. Uh, I hope I'm not going to disappoint you, and uh, I'm definitely going to give you, uh, you know, a chance to ask you the questions you would like to ask. Uh, ask after I've spoken, and um, I'm going to try and give you so much information on the artists that you will probably all be experts when you walk out here tonight. So, uh, could we have the first slide? Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about seven important issues connected with Van Gogh. The first one is uh, to tell you something about his Dutch background and his early training because this has a bearing on him as an artist and it carries throughout his life and if you understand the, the, the early years of training you understand his work also. The second is I want to talk about why did he come to South Africa and his early years here in South Africa. Very important also because it situates him within the uh, South African environment. And so that is a, a, an important question. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about these early Johannesburg years because they're also very cardinal to establishing him as, a, as a, uh, an important artist 
not only amongst the Afrikaner community, but uh, South Africa in general. And, and then I will talk about his connection with Afrikaner nationalism, uh, a very important issue that has to be mentioned also when you talk about Anton van Berg. And then uh, just something about his work in general, which you won't find in my book. Uh, this is the book I wrote on van Bo, uh, Anton van Bo and this, uh, the smaller works, uh, which covers everything on his work, but doesn't deal with some of these nitty-gritty issues that, uh, uh, for instance, uh, uh, points to his work in, 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 in a general context. The other one is, the, and I think that is probably the one which most of you people want to know uh, more about, and that is the, the question of how to identify a good van Vogue casting. And uh, this is one of the biggest problems that I find when I go to all the auction houses and I deal with every auction house in South Africa and I'm always called in and the one big problem is they don't know what to look for. What is it that makes a casting a good Van Gogh casting? And I will talk about that and then in the end uh, just something short about these plasters because so many people come to me and they say you know I have an original plaster by Van Gogh and they really think it's a million rands that they have over there and they don't realize that the plaster is really actually worth very little. So I'll come back to that. But let's start with the first issue, and that is the Dutch background and early training of Van Gogh. Now, um, first of all, one must understand that uh, as a young man, he comes out of a family of artists. His, his mother was very artistic, and, and I think the, the, the initial inspiration actually came from his mother, uh, Helena van Kerelen was her name, and then he also had an uncle who was a, a, an accepted uh, academic artist in Holland at that time by the name of Anton Beckerman, and that's probably also where he got his name from, Anton van Gogh comes from the Anton Beckerman, um, who was sort of a, 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 a landscape artist in the tradition of uh, 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 the mauve, that the very, very much the grey Dutch school of that time. Um, he, when one looks at his early training as a whole, you will see that that uh, he's actually not trained as a fine artist. He's he's mainly trained as a um, an applied artist. He he he's the, all his training with the exception of a, a few evenings that he attended uh, drawing classes and, uh, at the, uh, the Rotterdam uh, Kunstakademie, the, the, the Arts Academy. Most of his training was actually training uh, as an applied artist for um, uh, uh, the, the architectural side. So he was actually trained as an architectural artist. and, and, and it, it, comes through uh, throughout his life. Um, so if we look at the period from about uh, his 12th year when, in, in 1874 until 1882 when he comes, uh, or actually 1889 when he comes to South Africa, in that period most of the work that he does is actually connected with uh, the building trade. And you will see, uh, he, 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 on the um, advice of his uncle, Anton Beckermann, and the, 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 the influence of his mother, his father agreed that he would be enrolled as a, a, a part-time student of the well-known Dutch uh, sculptor, Joseph Graven. Uh, and there's the name, Joseph Graven. But, Unfortunately, Joseph, Joseph Graven was at the end of his life and, and before a year was passed, Joseph Graven passed away. So Van Bo had just a little less than a year study with this artist. And in that time, he did actually mostly basic work, basic sculpture, you know, copying ears and noses 
and, 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 and human hands and that sort of thing. He never really got to sculpture work. But a very important thing happened over there. And that is, uh, Graven was a very ardent uh, and enthusiastic supporter of the work of the great Belgian sculptor at that time, Constantin Menuir. And there's the name, uh, Constantin Menuir. And Menuir was the great artist of the, the workers class. And there's a, there's a work by him. And if you compare the very earliest sculptures that Van Bo made, like this uh, bird catcher, with Menuir's work, you can immediately see the style, uh, the, 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 the similarities in style. In other words, he was aiming to be an artist like Menuir, because his earliest master was so enthusiastically, uh, such an enthusiastic supporter of the work of Menuir. And, and naturally, Menuhir was greatly influenced by Auguste Ren, uh, Renoir, uh, uh, Rodin. So it's Rodin's impressionist work that filtered through to the Dutch at that time and influenced Van Hoog. But uh, after the death of Graven, Van Hoog's father thought, well, now is my chance. I always wanted this boy to become a teacher. So he's going to train as a teacher now. And then from 76 to 78, for two long, actually for three long years, the poor sculptor had to spend uh, as, a, as an assistant teacher at his father's school. His father was the principal there. And, and, and in some of his notes he said this was the time of his life that he hated the most because it was not what he wanted to do. And, and, and it's very interesting if you read <clears throat> Urde, Franz Urde uh, was a big friend of Van Vogt when Van Vogt came to South Africa the first time. They shared an, an, a, a, a studio. And, and he said, like Van Vogt, uh, he, he, he abhorred teaching. And when he taught at the girls' school in, 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 um, in Pretoria, uh, the, the Staatsmeisje school, he taught over there, Urde. Van Ho also taught there, but, but Urde taught over there. And, and the, the, the headmaster came to him and said to him, Mr. Urde, your class is absolute chaos. He said, I wasn't appointed to be a disciplinarian. I was appointed to be an art teacher. So he said, if you wanted a disciplinarian, get somebody to sit in the class and, di and discipline the children. And this was what, this was Urde. And, and in the notes that he wrote about his life, he said, that he hated teaching as much as Van Vogt hated teaching when he was teaching for his father in those years, 76 to 78. And then fortunately, again, Anton Beckerman intervened and said, oh, this poor kid, you're killing him. Let's get him to, to do something that he really wants. And then uh, Anton Beckerman enrolled him at a... a, a, a plasterer's firm called Freesweg in Rotterdam because Beckerman was in Rotterdam at that time and, and he, he promised that he'd look after the young boy and uh, so <coughs> he was enrolled in the, uh, 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 to do plaster work and actually what he did is he was trained as a stucco artist he did all these beautiful little designs that you get in Victorian buildings you've probably seen all the ceilings that they used to have in Victorian buildings he made those designs for which they did the pressings for the, the metal plates. So those designs, that's what he did while he was at the Free Strait factory. And then uh, he had the opportunity at night to go to the Rotterdam uh, Technische Academy, which is a technical academy. And he, kept, he always told people that he attended the Rotterdam Academy, but he never added the word technical. It was a technical academy. It was actually like our tech technicons over here, not the really an academy. But in any case, at, at that academy, he met uh, 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 one of the lecturers, uh, uh, Mr. Villeboy. There is, uh, and they started this friendship that lasted until he went. He left for South Africa. A wonderful friendship because Villeboy was an architect, 
but he was he was a very creative architect. 